Okay, I'm asking, will the real hoodlums raise their hands? <laughs> Tell them to go straight. Ajuru, jara, juru. Tell them to go kill. Ajuru, jara, juru. In 1976, Fela ran some kuti, sang zombie, or zombie, about the Nigerian armed forces. This tune, a spectacular virtuoso piece of military influence rhythm, captured a lot of what Nigerians thought about the military, but feared to say. Major General Buhari was in the army when this was released. Now, they stopped it from being aired on radio, but the people bought it in their thousands. On October 20th, 2020, there was a replay of the sentiments from way back as military officers attacked and shot at and killed defenseless and unarmed young protesters at the now infamous Lekki Tool Gate. As of today, the military story has swung from denial of involvement to pointing a finger at Lagos Governor Babajide Sonwolu as the man who asked them to move in on the youngsters. Interesting. What we want to know, therefore, is who ordered Sonwolu to request military intervention before slapping a curfew on Lagos? He has claimed powers beyond him. Now, following on from the military misadventure, another set of Nigerians went on the rampage in retaliation, not only for those killed all over the country on account of hashtag NSARS protests, which, by the way, the killing started probably in Auchi, Edo State. They damaged, looted, and burned buildings, both public and private. They nicked the Oba of Lagos' staff of office after attacking and sacking his palace, targeted Bola Tinubu's assets, they looted and burned homes in Calabar belonging to past and present senators of Cross River. They were described as hoodlums. A hoodlum is a person who engages in crime and violence, a hooligan or gangster. Why do I believe that the real hoodlums are in government and that these looters are angry, dejected, demoralized, impoverished citizens of the animal kingdom of Nigeria? a kingdom created and nurtured by the ruling politicians over the last 60 years. The well-orchestrated raiding of the car COVID warehouses exposed the fact that these items, meant for the generality of poor Nigerians, were hoarded probably for eventual sale by government officials. Because everything in Nigerian government is a business opportunity made profitable at the expense of the people. The government agencies do not have the moral right to arrest any of these looters. What they owe them is repentance, medical care, social welfare, honesty, and transparency. The looters, in return, owe their nation apologies and to refrain from such acts in a future where they are treated as people and not as animals. I'm afraid that these recent events have exposed the current government as out of touch with the people, and their moral right to rule has been eroded. The 12-minute speech by the president has, advanced, has not advanced anything Rather, it has exposed him as out of touch and perhaps past his sell-by date. Mm. He could not record the speech in one take. There were about seven takes pieced together. It's quite discouraging. So my advocacy is for a complete overhaul of our systems, new voting patterns to be developed and prepared over the next couple of years, government execution of the demands of the protesters in full with timelines. I'm, I'm afraid the protesters have the winning argument here. Love. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Awesome. 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 Love. Thank Craftly you. put together, <laughs> and um, you know, um, and that's the gentle but hard punch punching. <laughs> yes, so. um, I, I I agree with you. For us to achieve all of this, um, it's not just about electoral reforms because it is people that will implement the reforms. We have been amending the electoral laws, you know, continuously. Continuously. But if you have the same set of people. You, you make INEC, like I said, a retirement home for professors, palm sex, and the rest, where thugs will write results for politicians to, for professors to announce. Mm. And then you will need to have, you know, young, vibrant, internet savvy, you know, um, mindsets in such an organization. A situation INEC comes and says, we have a um, server. And after the election, only for them to say, no, the servers are not there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, so how do you, in this day and age, how do you still, you know, conduct election, a national election in one day, and then for five days you are waiting for results because they have to manually, 
you know, collate. collate them at the local government level to the state at level. At the ward level. That's exactly, at the ward <laughs> level. <laughs> okay, that's true, that's true. You know, oh, yeah, not so level, all of this, um, with all of yes. this, it, there will be manipulation in between. Yeah. But if you have people who are internet savvy, look at the way the NSAS protest. That exposed a lot of things that you can, you can manage. Why government were busy looking for leaders? I dare say that they were leaders. Yes. But they were within and sharing information, collating what was happening, you know, and then you see the way they were replicating the same process, you everywhere. know, in everywhere. Oh, it actually shows. The stories. So, um, <laughs> there was somebody who said that um, um, we were protesting in Egypt. You know, Nigerians in the diaspora were protesting in different countries, and Egypt coming out of a, you know, a situation themselves, they wanted no protest, they said it's against our law. They arrested some Nigerians. They shouted, now, one Nigerian on Twitter went at the diaspora lady and she said, well, you know that in Egypt is against their law. We will see what we can do. And one of the NSAS protesters just came out and said, well, we've spoken to them. Five of them are out, remaining two. And we just started up, see government to <laughs> Now they say, we will look what we yes, will do. Yes. See your people already doing. Yes. You so know? Nobody intervened, <laughs> mediated. Yes. And yes. Yes. They had lawyers, they had doctors, they had funding, they had everything. Food. So what, what don't they have? So can we they rebirth have this country? Because that it's string repeat, repeated itself in what you got presented. That we need to have a rebirth of yeah. this. But the, and like that's why yeah. I told you the 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 clearing house hmm. is clearing essential. House. It's so so rebirthing, then we push you for electoral reform. You need to, not just the electoral More reform. More than ever, you need to remove those people in the clearing house. How? Who do you put there? Because exactly. That's what I'm telling you. Ask Bolaho a question: Why you were at the bank? Why didn't you steal? Hmm. Because that's you had young people. House. You know, you had young people who you know, knew where they were going to. And they knew that they wanted to create, you know, a 21st generation organization that will meet global challenges and standards. And, and so, the first thing they did was they brought you in, they made sure that, you know, look, you were comfortable, you were a par with your mates and the rest of the world. And then, they set standards in place. If you fall below, you're out. Yeah. Did, did you and know? the same thing, yeah. quickly, the same thing, the same government in Lagos, I always refer to it. When Oshibanjo came, in his own words, as Attorney General, he saw that the standard was so low. And what they wanted to achieve with those people, they couldn't achieve. achieve. But the first thing they needed to do was to ensure that they raised their standard and then set up mechanism for transparency. He was young. Yeah. He was young. And then, for those who couldn't meet that standard, they flushed them out. Yeah. A, judge, a judge of the high court who was, you know, almost next in line to be chief judge, was flushed out. Flushed out yeah. You know, so... And that rebetted a new judiciary in Nigeria, but especially in the southern part where, you know, you now had new processes. You can do that also with INEC, if truly we are ready. In fact, with we all our it. institutions, because well, they are all... The one that is horrible. most important for all of us now, moving forward, so we do not have a repeat of all of this uh, mess we've seen in recent times, for 2023 is to now begin to do hashtag electoral reform in Nigeria. And what right. I personally want to advocate for is this, this idea of giving us like one month, 12 days to go get your voters card should be a thing of the oh, past. Oh, people are already Let asking. Me, al allow me to go in and get the card at my convenience. At your convenience. Yeah. Okay. Make it easy people for People are already asking that start allowing people to register now as they're clocking 18 until for the next three years. Let yes. people start to register. But I have a very pertinent question. Can Nigeria survive as it is? It can. Where you have power at the center diluting down and before it gets to the local government it doesn't get there that's what we are all saying that yeah, they are that's where the, the, the food because where, we where, say, where it's stolen because we have you said it won't survive that's why you need to change the, the structure the structure you need to change the mindset you need to change the structure but what do you change first you mm -hmm. change the structure while attempting to change a few mindsets you change the structure, structure yes. and that will further change you know mindset yeah, and then you structure exactly true federalism no, no, no. But look, let me it's, tell you. It's, no, it's, it's, it's nobody is, will. Look, is, let me tell that you. That is huge. That is bogus. See, Jimmy, the, the same leaders, if you like, go to true federalism 
After all, the governor, it wasn't the president that ordered palliative. It was, <laughs> governor, it was the governor that ordered palliative and not the president. So yeah. if, the, if you have the same crop of leaders, leaders if yeah. you like restructure they even get more through federalism, they yeah. get more powerful. How those leaders it. emerge is very important. important. Yeah. Right. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Well, it is time to finally draw the curtain on this week's episode of The Advocate. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. So, till next week, same time on this station, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.